Hi guys, welcome to the Daraki Community AMA. I'm your host, Yofu. Daraki is a decentralized media platform focused on creation and the publication by building essential decentralized media components, linking founders, creators, curators, and the readers in the community to freely curate, research, create, publish, and report on various topics. This is the episode nine in a series of research collaboration between Daraki and the Tubadao. We are so, so glad to have one year again today to talk about on-chain data analysis. So let's welcome the leader of Tubadao Research, Wang Ye. Let's welcome. Mm, hi, guys. My name is Wang Ye, and I'm the leader of Research Check at, um, from the Tsinghua University Blockchain Association. So I'm honored to be here today to share with you some of my thoughts on on-chain data analysis. An analysis. Well, um, before we talk about the on-chain data analysis, I think we should first figure out the question of what is on-chain data. So let's give a um, an overview of the on-chain data. Um, the on-chain data refers to the information that is recorded on a blockchain, which is a publicly accessible, um, decentralized and distributed ledger that stores and validates transactions. So um, it, its nature is immutable and temper resistant. Also, uh, it is also transparent and secure. So anyone can access the data from um, based, based on the uh, blockchain. So um, on-chain data includes the details such as the token amount transferred in its transaction, um, and also the wallet addresses, the fees paid to builders, and on-chain on -chain transaction volumes. Um, given the rise of the decentralized applications, namely the uh, the apps, um, the smart contracts have replaced the back end of traditional Web two applications. So any data produced through smart contract interactions is published on the blockchain and becomes a public good. So anyone can access the um, event log from the um, transaction explorer, and we can um, grab the insight from those on-chain data. Now, uh, so on-chain data can be roughly divided into um, three categories. The first one is the transaction data. Uh, it refers to the data containing transaction information, such as transfer the amount, sending and receiving addresses, and et cetera. And the second one is the block data. It is about the data um, of the block itself, such as the timestamp validators, the minor fees and gas fee, as well as the reward for those builders. And the third one is the smart contract data. It refers to the code data deployed on the blockchain that is not generated through user interaction. Um, so it is coded by developers. For example, the transfer function or the add and remove liquidity function um, in the smart contract. Um, I think it is worth noting that the user assets and transaction data from centralized exchanges, as well as the, um, namely the sex, are stored in their internal databases. And each transaction is settled and recorded only in 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 those um, sex database. So um, the trading data is not recorded on the blockchain. So it should be noted that this type of sex trading data is not included in on-chain data and cannot be queried through a blockchain explorer. Um, and other one, another tip is that the data can only be written to the Ethereum blockchain and users can never update existing data. So let's take a look as, at an example. Um, we can query information about um, any on-chain transaction on a blockchain explorer, such as Etherscan. And the following uh, graph shows a transaction on the first POS block after the merge of Ethereum. As we can see, um, this page includes some basic information about the transaction, such as the transaction hash, 
the transaction status um, is block number and the timestamp um, from and to addresses as well as some gas free gas fee. So these details constitute the basic components of on-chain data. And the second question is, why do we need on-chain data analysis? Well, it is because the um, because of the volatility of cryptocurrency market, um, because of the um, sharp changes in the market price, the market information plays an important important role in gaining insights into the market. So, on-chain data analysis can be um, viewed as a fundamental element of on-chain infrastructure, and it can bridge this information gap. Traders can observe all the activities happening in the blockchain ecosystem and under the flow of funds in the market and evaluate, and evaluate which activities may predict market price changes. So on-chain data analysis can be used to analyze trends in the crypto market. And for um, crypto investors, on-chain data is like the financial statement that companies make public in, in those traditional stock market. And investors can also use the on-chain data to make reasonable val valuation of different Web3 projects or protocols and make in informed investment decisions. Well, for example, uh, investors can use DeFi Llama to query the total value locked um, of DeFi protocols to determine their value. Um, TVL describes the total value of all tokens locked in a smart contract. And if a user deposit $100 worth of um, cryptocurrency into a DeFi lending platform, the TVL of that protocol increases by $100. TVL reflects the liquidity, uh, liquidity and potential risks of a uh, of a protocol, and it can also reflect its popularity and user trust. Um, for example, the upcoming Shanghai upgrade of Ethereum in March will allow users to um, withdraw their staked ETH. So many people believe that um, more users will be willing to stake their ETH after the you know Shanghai upgrade. Um, so the Lido, as the leading project in the Ethereum liquidity staking check, it became a you know a popular um, popular item of the market. So its TVL increased continuously after the uh, the new year in 2023, and surpassing the Maker to become the DeFi uh, protocol with the highest TVL. Um, um, but you know, if a protocol's TVL is currently low and it and is trending downward, there is con currently in insufficient user confidence in the protocol, and the project may have a risk point with its price possibly being overestimated. Um, and as as shown in this chart, the total uh, TVL of the DeFi market rapidly shrunk from around. 140 billion to below 80 billion due to the UST dumpling, uh, decomp decoupling and the, lu the Luna collapse in May the 2022. And in June, the total TVL dropped again to um, around $42 billion. Um, and it, it, can, it may be because the sharp drop in the SDTH and um, be affected by a series of bankruptcy events, such as of the Celsius and Three Arrows Capital and Voyager. Um, so currently the, the entire market entered a bear market and the total TVL of the DeFi market fluct, um, is between the 40 to $50 billion. Now let's come to the um, overall analysis of the on-chain data analytics market. First of all, um, we we found that the overall on-chain data analysis products generally use a subscription-based model for revenue. So I used a um, TAM formula to calculate uh, its potential market size. Um, um, currently, the data on 
analysis business can be divided into two categories, to business and to consumers. And the data services can be roughly divided into, you know, data APIs um, and higher customized data tables and data research reports, as well as some, you know, data da dashboards. Um, although ocean data is public and transparent and can be accessed by anyone, its, vo its value can only be fully realized through effective data analysis. So on-chain data analysis products have a high added value, and many on-chain data products are aimed at professional users with a relatively high average consumer uh, value. For example, um, I think I found that most of them uh, cost $200 per month or more. Um, so far, there are about nearly 7 million unique DeFi addresses. So I, if, um, if 10% of these are potential users. So taking the Dune's monthly fee of, as an example, then we can estimate that the TAM of the on-chain data net, an analytics market size can be about um, 3.4, uh, about three, $3 billion one year. But, you know, due to the significant differences in the tiered pricing for subscriptions and the differences in the willingness to pay for data services between institutional and individual users, I believe that the TAM formula cannot accurately estimate the market size of the, those on-chain data services as a whole. So I take the current global global market size and the valuations of data service giants as a reference. Uh, first, of, uh, first, first, according to the Statista, the global big data and business analytics market is worth approximately um, about $200 billion in 2022. The market value of traditional financial data provider Thomson Reuters is about um, $40 billion, $46 billion. But, and, and also even the business intelligence platform Tableau in Web2 has a valuation of $15 billion. But you know, in comparison, the valuation of the unicorn uh, Doom in the on-chain data analysis market has only just reached $1 billion. So it has great potential to grow. Um, the total market cap of the crypto market has just recovered to over $1 trillion, and the total TVL of DeFi market is less than um, $50 billion. But, you know, during the bull market, the total market cap was close to $3 trillion. Um, so the highest DeFi TVL reached about $180 billion. Um, according to, you know, a Twitter um, user, the on-chain data market should be a market size of tens of billions of dollars currently. And this is a chart of the um, coin ca market cap. Um, so let's then break down the blockchain data product landscape, uh, landscape from the following um, three perspectives. Uh, perspectives. So first, from a data stack perspective, a complete blockchain data analysis process involves several steps, steps, including data extraction, cleaning and transformation, loading into a data warehouse, analyzing data based on different business lines and observation indicator, indicators, and outputting uh, quantifiable results. So blockchain data products can be classified into three categories, um, data sources, data development tools, and data application, as well as um, namely the data app. The blockchain data analysis products we generally discuss mainly include the latter two, um, just the data development tools and data application. From a data processing mechanism perspective, Data processing mo modes can be categorized as being more Web2 native or Web3 native, distinguishing whether the products has forked or improved Web2 processing logic or developed a unique methodology based on the characteristics of Web3 on-chain data. 
This perspective mainly focuses on whether the data analysis product can find similar data processing logic in Web2. And also from a data application perspective, uh, you know, the DeFi, NFT, and GameFi are relatively major Web3 checks for data analysis due to their large scale and strong demand for data-driven data -driven insights. So um, according to a data, data scientist on Twitter, there are already many players in the blockchain data analysis ecosystem. The apps can be divided into products that target consumer or enterprise, as well as professional users, while data development tools can be divided into products for the developer um, community or for enterprises. There are also data products, um, products tailored to specific analysis needs in vertical fields such as DAX, NFT, um, anti-machine laundering, DAO, etc. So let's focus on the DeFi sector, since DeFi is the most um, in-demand area for data analysis. Um, I break down the chart into uh, from two parts. The y-axis is from data development to data insights, and the x-axis is from Web2 native to Web3 native. And from the de DeFi data analytics landscape, um, the, the on-chain data products in the DeFi sector can be divided into first uh, into two types, the data development tools and data insight tools. The data development tools are designed for data analytics, um, analytics and can perform the ETL process to parse, to parse transaction. Um, as well as the transaction status and ev event log data into formats that can be accessed using traditional query languages like uh, SQL um, or GraphQL. And um, they uh, store this data in a database for subsequent querying. These tools offer a high degree of customization, but do not provide data anal analyze results. Um, the Dune Analytics is the leading platform in this category. And for data insights tools, um, they aim at the consumers and provides more readers friendly data content for investors to reference in um, the decision making. These tools often provide, um, provide results in the form of data visualization dashboards, as well as some data reports. But you know they do not um, offer a high degree of customization, and user can only read pre-analyzed data results and cannot, you know, customize their output in terms in terms of their needs. And in this category, the leading platform is Nansen. In terms of the data processing max. Uh, mechanisms, on-chain data products can also be categorized into two types, uh, from Web2 native to Web3 native. The Dune footprint and Jenny data, um, you can find similar products in the Web2 world, such as the Tableau or Power BI. Um, but, you know, for some, and also, you, as you can see, for some uh, market data tools like um, coin market cap, uh, the coin coin gecko, or token terminal. You can find some you know similar similar uh, data tools in the traditional financial market like Bloomberg, Thomson Reuters, and Yahoo Yahoo Finance. But you know, from a perspective of the uh, Web three native, you can find that some um, data tools like the um, Nansen the either scan, you can find some data that cannot be found in the traditional financial market. Um, they provide some, they provide some informations like the asset, asset profit and raw and loss for wallet addresses and check fund flows, which are all based on in the actions within on-chain smart contracts. So such information is either centrally stored or missing in the traditional financial world. So we can consider this 
products um, as being Web3 native. Um, and I listed so, some uh, typical on-chain data and analy analytic tools um, from the data development tools to the data inside tools. And well, and then let's have a quick look at, at these seven um, data tools. The first one is the Dune Analytics. Its core feature uh, is like a, you know, um, SQL dashboard, I, I, I mean. Uh, it is based on the post GRE SQL, and it can store the structured blockchain data into a relational database. And it can allow users to use SQL code for customized data analysis and generate customized data visualization dashboards. And also users can share their um, self-made dashboards to the community and other users can view and fork those dashboards as their own. Um, the business model of doing an analytics is subscription based. Um, it provides um, three types of subscription. The first one is for community members. It is free. And the second one is an advanced advanced version, it costs um, $420, $420 per month. And also it has a, as an elite version, which costs uh, nearly $1,400 per month. And for our ordinary users, I think, you know, the community version is enough. Um, the second one, um, is footprint. It is very similar to Doom, and it also provides raw and processed data and chart tools for users to customize their own data and analysis panels. But you know, compared with Doom, uh, with Doom, uh, footprint is more user friendly, as users do not need to use SQL queries, and you do not need to know the SQL codes. But you can choose to enter its chart um, interface. Um, in the chart interface, it is very similar to Excel, and you can do some um, analysis such as filtering, sorting, and make some you know calculation and see the st statistics and profit tables to you know in this interface. So um, I think it is very useful for some you know, newly uh, newcomers in the on-chain data uh, market. And also Footprint also um, has a very big developer community and you can um, find some uh, changing charts and dashboards by other users in its community by uh, searching the keywords. And also you can um, copy others uh, dashboards for modification. Um, another special um, point for Footprint is that um, it covers the, um, the chains the most with supporting parsing data from 22 chains. Um, so this is the main point that uh, Footprint can outperform, outperform than the Dune Analytics. Um, and also the footprint divides data into three types, the gold, silver, and bronze level. The bronze level data is unprocessed and raw data, including on-chain transaction uh, information like transfer activity and log events. The silver level data extracts and marks NFT, GameFi, DeFi data from multiple chains such as transactions, addresses, and et cetera while gold-level data is aggregated business-level data, including some data like um, user po uh, purchase, market value, um, also the um, total value locked and other data, which can be used directly. Um, the, business, the business model of Footprint is also subscription-based. It provides two types of services. The first one is the um, analy analytic uh, service. Um, the for for this feature, it provides three types of um, um, three types of 
uh, version. The free version includes one GB data limit per query, and uh, you can also upload CSV up to five times and also there are two types of um, business version as well as the team version and another service um, provided by the uh, for print and analytics is that is its data api and this may be divided into four types of um, subscription from free version to growth version as well as scale version and finally the enterprise version um, it is also worth noting that Footprints has its own research column, and it will release research reports independently or by cooperation with other protocols or teams regularly. And you can check those um, research column after this AMA. We will publish this, this article into Dwaraki's um, website. And the last... Um, Data developed tools is the Jenny Data. It is a newly designed product, and it is released um, last. Uh, it was released last year, I, I guess. Um, it is also like Doom and Footprint. It is a cross-chain data an analysis platform based on SQL queries that provides reliable and clean data sources. And you can create charts and build visual dash dashboards by writing SQL queries. Um, the advantage of Jenny Data is um, it supports some chains that other tools like you know the Doom or uh, Footprint do not support, like the popular new chain Aptos. And currently, Jenny Data also has its own developer community, which users can view and share self-created dashboards. The business model of Gen Data is also subscription based. It it has two version. Um, the um, from now on, the premium version is by uh, invitation only. But you can apply for the wait list and try the premium version for free in in about um, six months. Yeah. Um, and let's come to the part of the data insight tools. Um, in this part, we have four um, products. The first one is the well known known uh, tool Nansen. I believe that most of you have heard of, of it. Um, its core features of um, the core features of Nansen is the wallet labels. Um, it provides the largest wallet label database in in the crypto world. And on the main interface of Nansen, users can query what wallet addresses, investment portfolios, public chain uh, macro data, market data, stable coin and DeFi market data, as well as the um, NFT market data. Um, the main function of Nansen is the wallet label. Um, you know, you can you can find some um, Former, formerly anonymous chain addresses um, from those given multiple labels on uh, found on Nansen. And those labels contains smart contracts, exchanges, stable coins, funds, um, heavy DAX traders, and NFT collectors. And users can quickly identify the wallet types that execute transaction and conduct due that uh, diligence on con contracts and projects and discover some market opportunities from the activities of um, some well wallets or um, some wallets of the funds and uh, you know uh, some uh, or for some from some organizations. Um, and the second um, feature, main feature of Nansen is the smart money. Smart money. The this is the most famous um, function of Nansen. Um, what it addresses with this label belonging to elite users in the crypto world, including wealth and venture capitalists. Checking those um, those wallets movements can help you to. Um, check the real-time movements of wells and some heavy DeFi players. And Nansen also have other um, functions like portfolio. 
um, you can log in to your web website and using their wallet addresses and view all of their assets, including how many, uh, which type of tokens they hold, um, and you can follow their move. Um, and also, Nansen provides the um, NFT analytics, uh, including the NFT Paradise, NFT God Mode, and NFT Wallet Profile profiler and NFT item profiler leaderboards as well as smart NFT trader boards. Just it is just like the um you know the market uh, data and you can find some uh, macro market chains of NFT market on the NFT paradise page. Um, in this page it includes the real time updates on the floor prices from OpenSea, as well as some NFT chains and popular NFT collections. You can use the um, NFT profit rankings or NFT gut mode to identify NFT wealth and find some, you know, top holders of specific NFT collections, and then use their wallet address to check their um, activities and discover some, you know, fortune opportunities in the real time. And also, um, Nansen has a token profile. Uh, it is similar to the NFT analytics, and it also provides macro uh, issue, issue, issuance and transaction data for tokens, with token paradise and token god mode being the main dashboard data. Um, in the token god mode, users can see the holdings distribution and the balance of the token in some SAX or DAX or the smart money uh, smart money wallets, as well as distribution of trading profits and losses. And it can also help um, investors to make decisions. Um, and the last two functions is help you to check the movements of some you know, smart money. Um, the first one is smart alerts. And also you can create a uh, watch list to check some you know, wallet that you keep um, keep attention attach atten attention to the subs um, the subscription model um, the business model of Nansen is also subscription based. Um, it provides four types of um, subscription from basic one, which costs one hundred and fifty dollars per month, to the enterprise. Um, and also, I think maybe for some, you know, elite traders, the alpha um, version, which has a more closed community and a private in investment consulting consulting services, um, must be valuable. And also, Nansen has its own um, research column and will regularly publish some data insight reports and investment analysis articles. And you can check the um check its research column to find more. And the second one for data insight tool is the Glassnode. It provides comprehensive on-chain data analytics for BTC, ETH, and LTC, including uh, modeling virus market data indicators like addresses and token distrib distribution, holder composition, fees, derivatives rates, and leverage. Um, exchange funds, miners, market sentiment, profit and loss, and other um, other um, indicators. I think Glassnode is more like a traditional uh, terminal for financial uh, analysis, and you can have a try because it 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 it, it, it also has a um, user customized um, dashboard for you to you know. You can use some indicators to create or uh, to create your own charts and you make visualization to see the chains and some you know hidden insights in the um, market price. Um, the business model of um, Glassnode is also subscription based. It has um, four plans, from free plan to institutional plan. Um, I think it's um cost is effective because you know for the advanced plan it only cost um less than thirty dollars per month 
for the inside part, Glassnode, Glassnode also has a research section on their website. And you can also subscribe to their Telegram or Twitter. They may publish the um, weekly insights um, on their social media accounts. Um, another tool for um, DeFi data analytics uh, is EigenFi. This tool is um, specialized for liquidity analysis in DeFi with a focus on MEV transactions and their related analysis. Um, now, EigenFi provides real-time MEV data, including real-time monitoring data on arbitrage, sandwich attacks, liquidations, and flash loan, as well as some you know, relevant trading, trading data for the uh, most popular tokens or liquidity pools. And it also provides identification of malicious tokens. And this is the main page of EigenFi. The first type of data it provides is the MEV transaction data. Um, includes the MEV type of transaction. For example, whether this transaction is an arbitrage or a sandwich or liquidation, and whether a flash loan was used in this transaction. Um, it also includes the EOA address of the MEV searcher, the MEV bot contact, contract address, and the block in which the transaction occurs. And also you can um, check the internal token flow of the transaction, as well as the gas fees and profit and loss calculation. Uh, just like this um, chart, this, is the, um, this shows the MEV transaction data. And the second one is the MEV contract or um, address data. Um, this includes the MEV type initiated by the address and you know you can check some counts and the trading volume of different um, MVV types. For example, this is a MVV bots contract, and also you can see the uh, profit distribution of the um, previous transaction this MVV bot made. Um, and also, if this address is a sandwich attacks victim it can also query the number of attacks and the amount of losses. You, as you can see, this is the victim history. Um, and you can check the loss and the loss distribution of the sandwich vi victim. And the third type is um, MV MEV market data. This reflects the overall market's activity and profits and loss situation, including the profits and loss dis distribution and the MEV transaction profit leaderboard. And this shows the most profited um, transaction and the most profited contracts as um, also the MEV bot for you. And you can check how these contracts uh, do this. And this also shows the hot tokens and hot liquidity po pools. Um, you can change the views by volume or by volume change, and you can find the most um, popular tokens during the maybe during the past twenty four hours or during during the past seven days. And also, it provides the MEV live stream uh, monitoring dashboard. You can see the real time MEV transaction flow to um, and quickly locate the tokens and token pairs um, in those liquidity pools. For example, um, if um, in this MEV live stream board, if uh, here, if the tokens are all nearly, you know, may, uh, for example, are all um, WTH and blur, this means that the price of the token may have a um, great opportunity for you to make arbitrage. Um, and also, EigenFi has a has developed a visualization tool for internal flow of funds in a arbitrage or sandwich and other uh, transactions. And you can check this tool at um, its um, official website. Um, 
you know, after entering the transaction hash, you can find a flow chart of all the tokens in the transaction. And it can make it um, easier for you to identify the trading strategy um, of such, you know, um, MEV transaction. For example, in this transaction, it is a um, it is an arbitrage which um, utilize the price difference in in the token OOF and WETH, and uh, um, you can check this transaction um, in Eigenfi's website. Um, for the business model, the Eigenfi is now um, free for the public, but uh, it also provides data API for um, for institutions and maybe they need subscription. Um, and also Eigenfi has a research column on its official sites. Um, um, in this column, it provides data analysis research reports on MEV arbitrage, liquidity, and security events in the DeFi world. And the last um, tool for today is the scope. It is similar to Nansen, the scope protocol focused on the address identification, but emphasized on the associate associated analysis of addresses. Um, according to its official website, the scope protocol aims to identify the um, actual control, control, controllers, um, which they call the as entity. Um, so now it provides two data services. Um, first is the scope API and the and its data analysis tool, Watchers. Um, for API, developers can use its API to query addresses such as wallets, tokens, and contracts. And the documentation can be found at its official website. And also the um, another um, tool developed by the scope protocols is Watchers. Um, it is similar to Nansen, but it provides the um, clustering charts for the um, for associating analysis of addresses. You can check the flow of funds between addresses like this. You can check some address maybe for the Alamanda research and find some related addresses um, um, based on the watchers. And also, watchers can also provide um, detailed information about wallet, token smart contracts, and projects. For the projects um, evaluation, watchers clustering algorithm can identify the un unique entity um, behind multiple addresses. So it can be easy for user to find the real user data excluding faked or duplicated addresses. For example, for RV, you can query the number of active entities and token prices. If a new project has more than you know, 1 million new addresses, but only um, 10,000 unique entities, it is very likely that there are fake addresses created for fake transactions. And, um, you know, the Nansen, uh, the the scope protocol, the, the watchers is also subscription based. It provides two two services as we already discussed before um, for API and watchers. Um, API has also three planes uh, for for free and advanced plan as well as the enterprise plan. For watchers, it has two plans. Uh, from now on, the free plan can um, for users can check up to five entities, and the pro plan costs about um, twenty eight dollars per month. And Watchers also has released um, several um, data inside dashboards for um, entities like um, they have already uh, um, Binance. So um, 
let's come to the um, conclusion. The first is that the on-chain data analysis has a high added value, and there's a wide range of users differentiation in their services. So um, as we already discussed before, um, most of those um, data pro products are um, subs subscription based. And um, for development, there are two scenarios emerged. Uh, one is to focus on the community building and cater to developers and technical personnel, while the other is to provide exclusive customized data insights to professional institutional um, investors. Um, the, the, the former one is like, you know, the data development tools like uh, Doom, Footprint, and Gen Data, and the latter one includes, you know, some of the, like, uh, Nansen and um, watchers. But, you know, I believe the future development of data tools may combine these two scenarios. Um, and the second one, the second conclusion is that the transparency of on-chain data means that the service providers cannot only rely on selling real-time financial data and information like traditional data giants like um, Bloomberg or uh, Thomson Reuters. Instead, they must seek um, some uh, incremental gains through the vast amounts of on-chain information available. So the current data processing logic of leading on-chain data analysis tools is in the transaction tra uh, transition um, in the transitional stage from Web two to Web three. And in the future, data analysis services for DeFi will be rooted in Web3's native data characteristics, especially the data analysis cap capability based on smart contract code, um, which will become the most important um, a way for Web3's data analysis platform. Well, um, in the end, from the user's perspective, I think, um, Returning to data-driven analysis is more likely to find a, find a uh, rational context in the heated market sentiment than narrative-driven analysis. As a fundamental infrastructure for the development of the blockchain industry, the market value of data anal analysis will only continue to increase with the overall development of the industry and its future prospects will be abroad will be broad and well this is all for today's um sharing and thank you for your all all your um listening wow thank you thank you one year it's uh it's uh really a, such a enjoyable and a meaningful talk and uh it's really thank thank you again for coming back and uh, to give us uh an English version of this on-chain data analysis. It's quite useful and uh, and uh, it's, uh, I, I believe many, many audience here is uh, really like it. And uh, currently, Doraki uh, also covers and founds original topics, including but not only limited to DAOs, governance protocols, token economics, game theory, web three, layer one, layer two, Ethereum, ecosystem and the public goods, DeFi, GameFi, SocialFi, and even quantum computing, space exploration, and many, many other more cutting edge topics. If you are interested in these topics, join us from the link in bio or just uh, scanning the, the QR code on the screen just to subscribe and follow us. And this video of this episode will be posted on directly accounts on Bilibili, YouTube, and other many platforms, and the corresponding research content will also be published on Daraki official website and the WeChat accounts very soon. And uh, more activities like this, like uh, uh, what one year did today, will be shared and posted on Twitter. So be sure to subscribe and uh, follow us.
And once again, once again, thanks to Wang Ye for this wonderful sharing. And uh, also thanks to Tubadao for supporting. And also many, many thanks to all of our community members and everyone here today. So thank you, Wang Ye. Thank you.